kept right here in the U.S. The FBI says it's impossible to know how many terrorists are at large in this country because they blend into society so easily. They quietly go about their lives waiting to be called to action. Brian Karam investigates one terrorist group which the investigators say has already struck with deadly consequences. You would think the small town of Buena Vista in central Colorado, just east of the Continental Divide, is about as far away from the world of international terrorism as you can get. Well, that's what Major David Bowers of the Chaffee County Sheriff's Department thought. But five years ago, near the summit of this mountain, Bowers began what would become the biggest investigation of his life after a local told him about some very strange activity on a 100-acre farm in these Colorado hills. Our first initial information that we received was that there was a clandestine drug lab operation here, a methamphetamine lab. That is what we originally began investigating. Bowers never observed any drug activity, but what he did see made him very curious. There were maybe 75 people, including children, living in the camp without electricity or running water, and many were dressed in Arab garb. I don't think that many of the residents of our county, in particular, were, were prepared to deal with some of the things that they were about to hear about. By now, Bowers thought he'd stumbled onto some kind of cult. So he sat up on the ridge overlooking the compound and watched the group for two years and started shooting videotape. Several times, he saw residents exercising and practicing martial arts, even in the pouring rain. See that road grader? He checked that out and found out it was stolen. He heard small arms fire, along with a rumor of a large cache of weapons. That's when we first realized that we had possible domestic terrorism involvement. By then, Bowers knew the group's name, Al Fukra, and that they were known to be a radical sect of Islamic fundamentalists. But he didn't know much more, so he began checking around. And just 60 miles away in Colorado Springs, he found Sergeant Bill Lidd. Lid was investigating Fukra and had come across them almost as accidentally as Bowers had. Well, back in uh, August of 1989, uh, some of our burglary detectives are working a, a burglary case of the storage locker unit, uh, and they more or less stumbled across a storage locker uh, over here at A3 that they thought uh, might contain some stolen property in the storage locker burglaries. That detective noticed people hanging around outside this locker one night. Suspicious, he checked with the storage locker company and got permission to open it. Inside, he found paperwork which belonged to Al Fukra members in Buena Vista. It is an outline of how to train a Fukra terrorist cell. It includes a directive that urged Fukra members to be knowledgeable of explosives, incendiaries, demolition preparation, and booby traps. Other materials urged members to wage a jihad or holy war. This is a large, well-organized, very secretive group. Uh, they have compounds all over the country. They have a, a very developed infrastructure. And they certainly demonstrated a proclivity for using violent means of bombings and killings uh, to accomplish their goals. And paperwork found in the Colorado Springs warehouse clearly showed their goal was to kill a variety of religious leaders, including the cleric who headed this mosque in Tucson, Arizona, liberal Muslim Rashad Khalifa. It is the objective of all of the sincere believers to restore Islam to the religion preached by the Prophet Muhammad. As I mentioned in this program, the Muslims around the world are not doing anything correctly. Everything is wrong. This speech, as much as anything else, is why al Fukra wanted the cleric dead. Khalifa denounced radical fundamentalism and claimed to be a messenger from God. He demanded a more liberal Islam and even denounced the death sentence imposed on Salman Rushdie. According to Tucson police, intruders broke into Khalifa's mosque on January 31, 1990, stabbed him some 29 times, and left him dead. And we've seen targeting plans where they apparently plan to, to destroy other religious facilities uh, in Los Angeles and other parts of the country. In fact, according to the FBI and other sources, during the last decade, Fukra has been linked to as many as 15 different acts of terrorism right here in the U.S. Those acts include the 1983 firebombing of a Hindu hotel in Portland, the 1984 firebombing of a Harry other officers raided the compound. They found this shack loaded with computers and surveillance equipment. They also found these books, which explain how to build and care for a variety of assault weapons. Operator's manual for a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. They also had intelligence information uh, identifying the names and addresses of key law enforcement officials throughout the state of Colorado and throughout the United States. 
Bowers had some interesting information, but didn't have any evidence that could lead to an arrest of any of the many American Muslims living here. I don't think anybody has any objection to them practicing their religious beliefs or educating their children under their religious, religious beliefs in an area like this. What Bowers objected to was terrorism, and determined to find proof of it, he went to a judge again in October of 1992, and he got a search warrant for a second raid. One of our search teams uh, stumbled across this bush and observed that it was tied together at the bottom with a piece of rope. They used some of the stolen rental equipment in the case uh, to uh, excavate this uh, particular cavern. And how far back does it go in there? It goes back in uh, approximately 30 feet. This is what police found buried in a hole on the side of the mountain. As the raid videotape shows, some 68 weapons including assault rifles, automatic pistols, and shotguns. All of them fully loaded with Egyptian or Chinese ammunition. What the hell's that? No weapons charges were filed against Bukra members because of the raid, but due to information gathered in Colorado Springs, coupled with the evidence found in the second raid of the compound, six men were charged with racketeering, and the leader of the sect was convicted of conspiracy to kill Khalifa in Tucson. These are deadly devices. They will kill. When the cases went to trial, James Crippen of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, who'd analyzed the three pipe bombs found in Fuqua's Colorado Springs storage locker, made this demonstration for the court. It shows exactly what one of the bombs and a liter of gas can do. Well, this device, although it doesn't look very impressive, uh, will flat out kill somebody or a group of individuals, depending on how close they are to the blast site. It will destroy a car, it will blow a room up, it will tear walls down, it will blow arms and legs off of people. Three, two, one, fire! Is that a hole in the floor? Yeah. Blew it out down. Following the trials, these two men, Chris Childs and Ed Flinton, remain wanted fugitives. Flinton for conspiracy and Childs for racketeering. This confiscated photo shows the two posing outside the hillside arsenal. Soon after, the rest of the Fuqua members abandoned their Colorado home. And this is where Colorado investigators say the members of Fuqua ended up, on this compound behind us in upstate New York. According to the Colorado Attorney General, this compound is the headquarters for the American Al Fuqua movement. For several hours, we observed this compound from outside its well-posted gates. Hello! We stayed outside the compound and tried several times to get their attention. No one would even approach us, but their attorney, who would only talk off camera, says he believes the people living here are not terrorists. But at least one alleged member of Al Fukra, who may have been present at this compound, is linked to the World Trade Center bombing. And according to the Colorado Attorney General's office, there may be 13 other compounds like this one around the country. New York State Police say they're investigating the compound near Binghamton, New York. And the Colorado Attorney General's office is working with federal authorities to identify other Al Fukra compounds. Meanwhile, there's an intense manhunt underway for Childs and Flinton. Deputies say Chris Childs is a master of fraud and deception. He holds two passports and several Colorado driver's licenses, all under different identities. Childs is charged with racketeering, forgery, and theft. Deputies say he stole at least $500,000 in disability schemes. They say he also stole the heavy construction equipment the group used to build the secret tunnels. Edward Flinton is charged with conspiracy to commit arson and murder. Deputies say Flinton wrote a four-page memo which detailed the plot to murder Rashad Khalifa. They say he also directed members in a firebombing. Flinton was spotted near Charlotte, North Carolina last February. Deputies believe he's with his wife and children, a 10-year-old girl and an 11-year-old boy. If you know where Chris Childs or Edward Flinton are hiding tonight, call our hotline right now, 1-800-CRIME-93.